Lesson 92. I want to get into another song, and it's a good entry-level jazz song for you to try. I'm going to open up my mini real book here. I've talked about the real book. Here's the full-size one um, and the mini one. Uh, so I'm opening up to Autumn Leaves, a Johnny Mercer song. Now, if you're really slick, you can do a screen capture of this chart right now and have it and print it out at home. Um, there it is for you. Now, this one is interesting, and it's not too far off from the one chord jam song. Um, there's a couple changes here and there uh, that I want to hit you to. In some cases, um, well, notice the key signature is one sharp. Um, that means G major, or it's relative minor, which is E minor. I didn't talk about a lot about relative uh, keys in these in this series. I think it's more important to, to think parallelly. Now, just think E major, E minor as they compare each other parallelly. But here we are as the key of signature for G major, but the song is in E minor. How do we know? Well, the last chord is at E minus. This book has that uh, hip uh, thing. E minus means E minor in this case. These are like handwritten charts. Um, the end of the A section, E minor. Um, the end of the whole song, E minor. So it's a good chance, a good guess that's E minor. But now, what I want to bring out is the note D. In a lot of the chords, there's D chords. So let's see, there's uh, a D chord right there, a D7. So obviously you'd have to have a D in the in the scale you use. G, the fifth of G is a D note. So a D would be important. That means it's not going to be harmonic minor. It's going to be pure minor. What is pure minor? Or natural minor, some people call it. Or aeolian minor. In other words, it just shares the key of G. So it's one sharp, F sharp. But E is your main note. But there'll be times in this song when, because it's in E minor, the composer, Johnny Mercer, by their prerogative, they can do whatever the heck they want when you write a song. When you write a song, you can do whatever you want too. It doesn't have to stay in the same key. It doesn't have to stay in the same scale all the time. When they get to the end of the first eight bars, there's a B7 chord. You see that? B7 is the five of E. We talked about this in our chord lessons. That means that B7 has, can you spell it? Remember the easy chord spelling system? If you know B flat, you know B. If I bring it up a half step, it's B, D sharp, F sharp, and A. All those notes are in the scale of E minor except the, the D sharp. So what does that make it? That makes it, for a moment, it makes it harmonic minor again. So you'll sound more authoritative if you throw in some D sharps when it gets to that spot. Now, what happens if you don't? The sky doesn't fall. The band doesn't kick you out. Um, you'll just sound like you're a little more pointed, a little more in. Um, you can, if it's a, if it's a, if the band's on the B7, and you do, it's just a blues note to it. It's okay. If you, if you do a D sharp, it fits in. So just think of that. So there's a couple spots like that in this song where you can just blow with the G major key signature and make E your tonic and um, throw in some E blues here and there and throw in a D sharp when you see some five chords coming around. So you've, um, there it is in, in the B section. It goes two, five of one. Here's a half diminished. The two, the two is F sharp minor. F sharp dash is minor with a flatted fifth. It's half diminished. So what is the flat fifth of F sharp? C. It's already in the scale. So you're cool to stay in the scale. Um, and B7 with a flat nine. Hmm, we talked about that. We did a whole series of flat nine chords. What is the flat nine of B? Up an octave is the eight. Up a half step is C again. It's another C, it's still in the scale. So you're cool. Um, and more Ds down here. Uh, and then we get, uh, we can throw in the D sharp when you have the B7s if you want. Just be aware of that. Um, here's this descending thing that a lot of bands do. It's an arrangement. Some people put that in, some don't. Just I, I go more chromatic. If you don't know what chromatic means, find the video I did on chromaticism. Um, and there's the B7. You might want to morph into the D sharps at the end. So otherwise, start being aware. When you hear these certain chords come and start throwing things in, it'll be the beginnings of your awareness of actually listening to all the changes. But in this song, you can kind of just go for it with one scale and torque it here and there to make it fit. Follow your gut, train your ears, and you can do this too.